Okay, so here is the update on the uh, continuing uh, work on research of improving uh, motor efficiency. And uh, I'm working on different uh, designs. So before I was testing out bucking fields, and before bucking fields, I was using um, flux gates. Uh, so I'm going to be testing all the different <clears throat> possibilities and whatever wins is going to be what I will build a motor. Now this is not a motor, this is just a test rig to test uh, the effects and study them and it's just really easy to work with and that's why I'm using this. So what I'm going to be sharing here uh, I'm sure is going to be useful to many people that are uh, playing around with pulse motors and uh, here goes. So right now on this device I've made this coil. So I'm suggesting and I am working now with very low uh, DC resistance coils. So this wire here you can see is a very large wire. That's a 13 gauge wire and uh, that coil is wound with all of that. It has a core from a transformer uh, lamination, lamination core and that is um, <clears throat> um, about half an inch wide by an inch and a quarter wide. <clears throat> so what I've been uh, finding and uh, this is stuff that I was doing back a month ago is uh, if you use a a permanent magnet on a rotor it gives you obviously uh, better work as far as a motor is concerned but a uh, different configuration would be to use a permanent magnet uh, 90 degrees from the way you normally use a magnet so normally you would have like this would be your south pole or your north pole like so on I'm saying reverse your magnet turn it around 90 degrees so basically you have a north pole on that side and a south pole on that side so your blotch wall between the two poles is in the center here so again here at the top of the magnet you will have both a north pole changing over to a south pole if you arrange your magnets in this configuration on your rotor at this time these are uh, by the way one inch square cube neo magnets and uh, I only have two of them on the rotor. I only have two of these with me right now. These very powerful N52s. And um, <clears throat> we're not gonna be utilizing the whole uh, magnetics flux uh, capabilities. If you look there, I've got quite a large air gap. And uh, so I'm not uh, bringing it close to the core. The effect is what I'm after, but we definitely have um, enough you know enough force here I'm letting go of the wheel and you could see that it pulls in the wheel very well so that's the whole idea is the core is going to uh, attract the magnet and when the magnet gets to this point here where it sticks okay it will then energize I've got my uh, optical sensor here and I've got a strip that's pretty well close to the width of the magnet uh, the magnet is one inch and I'm at 0.9 of an inch there and um, so the interesting thing is what I have found from my tests and I can save you a lot of time is better your magnet to be uh, double the length of your core so right there I'm having a hard time here showing you uh, right there that core I said is a half an inch wide and then this magnet is obviously an inch wide so I found that that's the better magnet to use from my test so far anyways and because look I can easily advance it from there to there it doesn't require very much power so it doesn't have as much of a sticky point if I had a half inch magnet with that half inch coil I wouldn't be able to move it like that with my finger see it bounces back and forth Okay, so that's what I've found so far and uh, sharing that with you and letting, you know, you decide. But there you can see that it just, I'm not doing that. That's the magnet just doing it on its own. So you can get the same pull force and then it just 
you know, it's energized there and it really pushes it when, when it uh, gets energized. And uh, up to this point here, and then the switches let go, and then it continues its work. So I will demonstrate it to you. And this configuration here is the winner as far as like using the less amount of power. And you'll see the scope shot, and it's a very unusual scope shot for uh, energizing an inductor. And I've uh, already posted the scope shots of this, <clears throat> not this one, I had another one where I had uh, magnets that were uh, just a different configuration. I was using a core. So this is actually the best so far, and I'm just giving it away, and you decide what you want to do with it. Um, my typical circuit, my opto, is uh, triggering this circuit here, which is a um, double MOSFET configuration, allowing the uh, current to go in either direction. So taking current or returning current to the source, it can do that. Um, very, uh, very low uh, uh, resistance on these... Uh, uh, I can't stress more about this. Really super low resistance is required. Okay, so these have like a 0.024 ohm resistance uh, on these uh, MOSFETs. And uh, I'm using current sensing resistor as well. Don't put a 1 ohm current sensing resistor. You're going <laughs> to screw up your, 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 uh, your power uh, going, your, you know, your power being delivered to your coil. This is a... Uh, 0 0.01 ohm resistor, but I've got two of them in parallel, so I'm down to 0 0.05 ohm. So I've got about twice the DC resistance or the resistance here than, than my switch does, but that's okay. I'm just you know trying to sense current there, and I need I don't want to go too low. And like I said, I don't know if I mentioned this. This coil here is point uh, or 0 0.3 ohms, so it's like less than half an ohm. And that's really important too. And if I could drop that even more, I would. And it just gets better. The more you can drop your resistance of your coil, the better it is. If I had thicker wire, 10 gauge, I would wind that sucker with 10 gauge. And it's not about necessarily the amount of turns, it's about the mass of copper you have there. And uh, Hobb has demonstrated that, that you can get as equal magnetic force so uh, with the same mass of copper. So uh, best to just, you know, drop your DC resistance of your primary coil, super important. Uh, and your wires going to it, don't use alligator clips. That's the thickness of my wire there going to my coil, okay? These are 14 gauge uh, wires. So, uh, no, sorry, 12 gauge. These are 12 gauge wires, okay? So the wires are even thicker than the coil wire. And actually, if I had uh, eight gauge wire, I would change that to eight gauge wire. Really, keep all resistance down to the minimal possible and you're gonna see better uh, results. Okay, so uh, I'm going to just be powering this with 1.5 volts only. It operates uh, actually down to 0.7 volts, but um, you know, it's kind of boring. Uh, but I'll, I'll do it at 1.5 volts. And the reason why is because we're going to be able to see uh, current being returned basically during the on time of the operation of this uh, configuration. So what I'll do right now is I will just spin the rotor. And there you see the rotor spinning. And the uh, circuit isn't on. I'm just showing you here the waveform Okay, that is the voltage that's being induced in that coil by that specific configuration of the magnets. So it's a mono uh, induced field just going one direction like that, perfectly symmetric as well. Okay, so when you power the uh, circuit, you're going to be powering smack center in that. And you're going to be powering pretty well the whole width of this. Uh, induce a wave here. So your switch is going to start about right here and it's going to end about right there. So that should be also perfectly symmetrical and you will get just about the most efficient uh, performance uh, with that configuration. So it's been spinning on its own right now on its own so I'm just going to give it a little bit of a spin and now we can see the waveform 
And now I will connect my circuit to this battery. This is what's going to start the circuit. And now you will see what happens. I'm now connected. So this is the motor action. This is the action of put, putting current in this inductor. Now the uh, blue trace here is the voltage across our coil here. Okay, is and then the yellow trace is our current sensing resistor. And this is very unusual for your current sensing resistor to actually be uh, going back across the zero line and actually this is returning power at this point. Right here at the zero line, that's power being returned. So this is a very unusual configuration and it gives you a very unusual uh, result which is a very positive result as far as I'm concerned. So there's the data on there. So keep in mind the current sensing resistor is 0 0.05 ohms and that is our uh, times uh, division on the uh, voltage division. Sorry, voltage division. And there's our voltage division there uh, on our uh, voltage. And there is our times division. Now I have the uh, flyback uh, collected and uh, what I'll do is I'll just open up the flyback. There's my flyback diode just going to this cap and this cap has a 1k ohm resistor. It's just dissipating that. There is no power as you can see uh, on there. There is the uh, uh, voltage on it and I'll just turn on the uh, meter and show you. We have hardly anything on that uh, 1k ohm resistor. But as you increase your input voltage to make this motor really, you know, give you RPM, that will obviously increase. But there is not much flyback in this. But the reason why I am still leaving it there is because um, it just makes it cleaner. What I'll do now is I will remove it and you can hear what happens. Now you can hear a click click. And that was actually screwing up my camera there. So now I'll connect back the flyback collection. Now it's collecting flyback. The flyback is off. Now if you look at the scope, you can see all these uh, ringing here that's happening. I'll uh, actually expand on that and give you a better view and move it uh, back there. So there is the whole ring down of the uh, flyback happening right there. So it's just making it cleaner to collect the flyback. So now I'll collect it. And now you see all that ring down is mostly gone. And now I'll change my <coughs> time division back to where it was. I guess it was here. Now we can look at it like that too. So this is like, again, I can't stress how so unusual it is to see the current uh, working this way. Usually you just see current go boom and, you know, it shuts off at the, uh, at the off time. And now you can see the current charges and then flips back and actually goes back the other way, a portion of it. Now you're seeing a variation up and down. It's kind of interesting. It's a bit like a heartbeat. What I'll do now is I'll just disconnect the uh, circuit so the on switch, the switch of the uh, current going into the coil won't be there. It'll just be the voltage across the coil that's induced by the uh, permanent magnets from the rotor. And uh, notice how tall that field is. You can see it here, right there. And all what we're doing, we're just adding that little corner there and that little corner there. And here I go, disconnect the circuit, the switch, see? See how high as well that field is? It's even higher than what I'm actually putting into, into it. So we are not adding uh, very much energy. Here I'll connect it again. So it's lost a little bit of momentum when I disconnected it, but uh, now it'll find its RPM. So anybody working with uh, um, pulse circuits could uh, and put this, uh, just flip your magnets around and uh, you're going to see some really interesting results. 
But like I say, I think it'd be better for your magnets to be uh, magnetized in the other direction and having wide magnet magnets wider than your core, at least I think twice as wide as your core. That's not conclusive, but uh, pretty close. So here I disconnect it again. See how high that waveform is? Now, the reason why there's variation is my magnets vary. So here you can see that pulsing. This one's stronger, this one's weaker. Stronger, weaker. And that's why that when I have the uh, current connected and going through the coil, you get this variation as well. It's kind of nice, I like it. It's a bit like a heartbeat, like I say. So that is the update on uh, where I am uh, studying at this time. And I think this is a winner, really. Uh, it's just so, so efficient. Uh, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> I uh, have been noticing that sometime, like, uh, like I say, about a month ago I was working on this and uh, then I just tried the bucking feel and, and just now I'm going back to this. I think this is uh, really uh, the winning combination. So thanks for your interest and uh, hope this uh, helps anybody that's uh, interested in replicating this. Whoopee, I'm counting on you to uh, replicate this. So, s'il te plaît, aide-moi avec ça et puis euh, fais une démonstration pour qu'on puisse euh, tout voir euh, les résultats. Merci. Thank you. Bye.